My Sterling single, power 56, fitting the flexible water piping which connects to the tender and explaining the process. Once fitted, I can test the axle driven water pump and make sure that it pumps water into the boiler. I really do like watching this engine run. On the full size, these driving wheels were eight feet in diameter and when they were running, they must have looked really stunning on the rails. These engines in the 1800s could run on the rails at up to 60 miles an hour. And if you were the fireman on one of these engines, you deserved a bravery award. They used to have to swing out of the cab and get onto the footplate above the injectors. That's because early injectors like the ones fitted to this locomotive needed adjustment. This is an extract I made from a video earlier on in the series. I cut off the end of the whistle using my bandsaw, then I machined it in the lathe, then I made a special adapter fitting to go into the end of the original whistle to allow me to fit a larger diameter tube on the end like this. This is an extract from part 11 when I show the creation of this special whistle and it really does sound good. It has a slightly deeper tone and makes a tearing kind of sound as it blows. It's far better than the original sound. In a previous episode, I used some temporary piping to pipe the water connections from the tender to the engine. This is the type of silicone rubber tubing that I used to connect compressed air to most of the models that I test in the workshop. And for this job, it's generally okay. It is actually automotive vacuum tubing. I've bought some different silicone rubber tubing, and this has a larger internal bore diameter, although it's supposed to be 6.4 millimeters, it's bigger, and it's thinner wall tubing. If you push a piece of silicone rubber tubing onto a pipe that's the same diameter as the tubing, it's very difficult to pull it off later. Often I have to remove silicone rubber tubing from piping using a Stanley knife, and this is obviously no good for this application. And neither are these rubbish hose clips that came with the silicone rubber tubing. I've never seen any as bad as this. They are terrible. I'm going to use these spring clips like you see here. I bought a lot of them a while back, and they're really good at holding silicone rubber piping onto brass or copper tubing. Here you can see what it's going to look like at the engine end. The threaded connector on the back of the locomotive is designed to be fitted with a piece of copper tubing with a union cone and union nut fitted, because the water output of the hand pump is at a very high pressure. This silicone rubber tubing with the thin wall which is attached to the piping on the drag beam, the two pipes on the left feed the injectors with water and are connected to taps fitted to the tender. One of the pipes on the right hand side supplies the axle pump with water and the other one is the bypass back to the tender. And in this clip I'm showing the function. Here I'm testing the axle driven pump and the pipe with a piece of copper tubing pushed into it is supplying the feed water to the axle driven pump and because the bypass valve at the rear of the locomotive is currently fully open it's just returning the water to the tank. I'm only squeezing this pipe to apply some water pressure to the connection at the locomotive end. This is the bypass valve and it controls the amount of water that goes either back to the tank or into the boiler. I'm fully shutting it, so what should happen is the tank should drain and the boiler should start to fill. This is quite a slow process because it only gives one squirt per revolution. This video is running at a higher speed. And now so is the engine. All of the water soon went into the boiler. I turned off the air supply and unscrewed the blowdown valve and now the water is being returned into the tub which conveniently fits underneath the locomotive. I'm very pleased to say that this has been a good week. I've had good news all week. I'm no longer taking type 2 diabetes medication because I found it to be ineffective and a bit of a waste of time. The first bit of good news that I received, without the medication, I reduced my HbA1c level down to a personal best low of 52. And 52 is a good number. I would share the secret but I'm not going to do that, because when I put anything like that on the channel, I get some fools saying, I didn't subscribe to this channel for things about prostate cancer and diabetes, where ignorance is bliss. Oh yes, and the other thing, my creatinine albumin level is also okay. And that's to do with my kidney function. 
Anyway, enough of the medical stuff. The video's nearly over, and the whistle sounds really good. Time for me to go. I'll leave the video running in forward and reverse. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.